Hey Precalc, got a new video for you. It's lesson 2.4. It's not 2.4 from the textbook, so let's not get confused about that. We're going to talk vertex form with parabolas and absolute value functions, and uh, hopefully you guys will come away with some new knowledge here. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about this parabola. Now if you recall, a parabola were those quadratic functions in which we factored, uh, used the quadratic formula, all that good stuff. And I did allude to the fact that there is kind of like a standard form for parabolas. It's actually called vertex form, where it's y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, in which hk is either the bottom of the absolute value, not absolute value, the bottom of the curve or the top of the curve. All right? HK is the vertex. The A term decides a few different things. It decides whether or not it's the parabola is going to open up versus downward. Okay, It's going to decide whether or not it's a wide parabola. We call that compression. Or if it's a skinny parabola, which is called stretching. And um, yeah, so we're going to unpack all that stuff. First thing I want to show you guys is how you can turn this, uh, this equation into vertex form. So we saw it with circles, completing the square. So if you've got a plus 27, That plus 27 is just not getting the job done, okay? It is not creating a perfect square factoring situation. So what we do is we say, let's figure out what will create a perfect square situation, in which case it's the middle number divided by 2, 5, and then you square it. 5 times 5 is 25. So what we do is we say, 27 isn't cutting it. I'm going to add a new number that's going to be the perfect square that makes this a perfect square trinomial. But I just can't create a plus 25 out of thin air. I've got to add the 25 to the other side of the equation or say I'm creating a plus 25 and a minus 25 on the same side of the equation. This creates all right, and I'm using knowledge from the completing the square for those circles from the last assignment. Okay, The shortcut is you can take x plus that middle number divided by 2, square the whole thing. So this three-term polynomial factors to x plus 5 squared. Okay, And then you get 27 minus 25, which is a positive 2. That's now in vertex form. And what it tells us is that we have a... Uh, a negative 5, positive 2 vertex. So at left 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1, 2, we've got the first point on the parabola. The first point on the parabola now is going to tell us what the axis of symmetry is. So what I do now is I, I plug in numbers to both the right and the left of that axis, and they should give me symmetrical points. They should be sort of like the same y value um, up or down from where you plot them. So if, if I plugged in negative 4, for instance, negative 4 plus 5, 1. Square it, still 1. 1 plus 2, 3. So negative 4 comma 1 is another point. It's got a partner point on the other side of that axis of symmetry. So if you go over one, up one from there, if you go left one, that's also going to create a point um, on the other side of that vertex. And then you could test another point. You could plug in negative 3. That's going to give you negative 3 plus 5, 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 2, 6. So negative 3 up to 6. And then two away from that on the other side is going to be another partner point. So this axis of symmetry now creates this parabola. 
And you know, you can plug this, if you've got a, if you got a calculator with a table in it, you can just plug that equation in and it'll give you all the points you need. But I think recognizing the structure here that this creates a left shift five and up shift of two, the one means it's completely neutral. So it's not a skinnier parabola or a wider parabola. It's positive, so it's opening upward. That gives you a lot of information if it's just in vertex form. So what happens if you put a four out front? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is, con is just separate that constant all the way out there and tell, and tell ourselves we're creating a perfect square trinomial with these x terms. So the first thing I'm gonna do is factor out the four, okay? So I don't have to divide everybody by 4 because I'm factoring it out of there. So that leaves me with x squared minus 2x. So all I did was say, hey, 4x squared minus 8x, that's the same as 4 times x squared minus 2x inside there. Okay, now we complete the square on this polynomial. All right, you're ignoring the four for the, uh, for the time being. Ask yourself, what's negative two divided by two? Negative one. Now take it times itself, positive one. That's the new number inside there. It's the perfect square that makes this now factorable in such a way that we are going to get x minus the middle number divided by two squared. Now, what we did here was we created a one inside parentheses, but that one is actually going to be multiplied by this four right here. So we didn't create a one. We created a one times a four. We created a plus four. Now, if you create a plus four, you need to offset that creation with either a plus 4 on the left or a minus 4 by this constant right here. I'm going to create a minus 4. All right. So this 4 is on the outside. It remains on the outside. Negative 2 minus 4, same sign, add them and keep the sign. And now we've got a parabola in vertex form. The vertex is positive 1, negative 6. The 4 is going to multiply every single factor by 4, so it's going to be super skinny. If I plug in 0, I'm going to get negative 2. I'll just leave you guys to plug in those numbers in your calculators. And since this is the axis of symmetry, I'm going to have a partner point on the other side. So it's one unit from the axis of symmetry, go one unit in the other direction. I can also plug in, say, a negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Square it, 4. 4 times 4, 16. 16 minus 6 is 10. N. Okay, so it's, it's way high up there. So here's 7, 8, no, 8, 9, 10. So it's also 3, 10. Okay, I messed that up. I messed that up. Forgive me, please. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you guys are seeing that the 4 right here stretches the function up. This shifts it right one, down six. I got one more of these things for you. 
And as you could have predicted, there's a negative out front. So that'll create a lot of joy for us, right? All right, group these two together. Cast the negative six off to the side just for now. I'm going to divide out the negative two here so that it's negative two factored out gives us positive x squared minus 5x. And then I'm leaving a space for that perfect square somebody who's going to make this complete. Get it? Perfect square, completing the square. Yeah. Marginally funny. So then what do we do inside here? We're supposed to, we're supposed to split the middle in two and square it. So half of 5 is 2.5. If you square 2.5, you get kind of a funky decimal plus 6.25. And then here's the kicker. What you're supposed to do at that point is you're supposed to take negative 2 and multiply it by the 6.25. It's like we've actually, we didn't create a plus 6.25. We created a plus 6.25 times negative 2. We've created a negative 12.5 which means we offset that numerical creation by adding 12.5 to the negative 6. See, everything is neutral now. There's a negative 12.5 floating around in this expression, and there's a positive 12.5 right there on the right-hand side. So what do we got? We got a negative 2 on the outside. That's going to make it upside down and skinny. The shortcut to complete the square is you take the middle divided by 2, so 5 halves or 2.5 with an x. And then negative 6 plus 12.5 is, well, opposites subtract, so take 12.5 minus 6. That's going to be positive 6.5. So our vertex is... You go right 2.5, up 6.5. We know it's going to go downward. So there's my vertex. Now this is kind of tricky. What I can do is, I mean, my axis is on a 0.5 value. I guess I just have to make sure that whatever distance I go from that two and a half value, it's just got to be consistent. So I don't know. Let's try, let's try plugging in two. Two minus 2.5 is negative 0.5. Negative 0.5 squared is going to be one fourth. One fourth times negative two is negative half. Negative half plus six and a half is six. Okay. I would encourage you again, use your calculator if you're not following along with the mental math that I'm doing right now. And with fractions and decimals, that's totally understandable. So if you're half, I'm sorry, I messed that up. It should be 2, 6. So 2, 6 is a point, so is 3, 6, because they're each half, a half x unit away from that axis of symmetry. So try 1, uh, try 0. And you'll come up with a few more points. If I tried 1, that'd be 1 minus 2.5 is negative 3 halves. Square that, you get 9 fourths. Take it times negative 2, you get negative 9 eighths. Uh, no. Let's plug this in and just use our, our calculator really quick. Because... <laughs> no, not that one. This one, okay. Okay. <laughs> So if I plug this in, negative 2, x minus 2.5, the whole thing squared, I can go to a table. And if I do my table set, probably around 0, go up and down by 1s. All right, so 0, negative 6 is a point. That'll be helpful. Which means you are 1, 2, 
and a half units away, so go half, one, two. We also have the point one, two. So go one and a half in the other direction. And I don't know, I think that's, an, that's enough points to, to flesh out the curve. All right, now usually I'd stop the video right here, but I'm just gonna power on through and talk about the absolute values because they have a very similar connection to parabolas and you don't even need to do completing the square. So the majority of the work is already gonna be done for you, so to speak. Oh, um, you know what? Strike that. We've got number four here, which is going to take a few more minutes as well. So I will stop the video right here.